Hi everyone, good evening. Welcome to this brief video session where I'll walk us through an example of creating a diagrammic process flow. So I'll dive right into it. So as we learned on Sunday, we went through how to communicate complex ideas by means of using the framework called process flows. Process flows are ideally your best means when you're trying to communicate really complex and difficult to understand ideas because it's, it involves breaking the task into steps. And as humans, our brains can understand ideas better when you can show the logical progression from A all the way to Z. That's always much easier to understand. And that's what the framework process flow really helps us to do. So we have an example here. The task is to create an account process flow for a financial management app. We're going to call that financial management app FinManage, for instance. Okay, so that's the goal. The goal is to create an account process flow. This is the goal, an account process flow. And if I was to explain that to a stakeholder, it would be quite difficult to do so without any uh, form. I could mean I could use paragraphs or lots of sentences. It makes it still difficult to comprehend, very abstract. However, if I was to explain this account process, the process whereby users can create an account using a process flow, it's so much easier to understand. And so, what are we being asked to do? He said, we're tasked with designing account creation process for a new financial management application called FinManage. The app allows users to track the expenses, their budgets, and manage their finances effectively. The task is to map out the steps a user will take to sign up for an account on the platform. All right, so let's highlight that underline it perhaps put it in bold just so it's clear what we're trying to do okay that's the steps a user will take fantastic that's what we're to do so the process should include capturing personal details verifying identities setting up security measures and confirming account creation Ensure to incorporate security measures such as two-factor authentication for enhanced account protection. Okay, so you're at work and you've been giving this. What do you do? You're, you know, you're, you're potentially thinking of just describing the process. Well, in this case, you don't. Let's use the process flow framework. So there are two ways to do so. As we learn, there's a descriptive approach and there's a diagrammic approach. And the descriptive approach, it's really useful, it's great communicating with senior stakeholders in the business because it really lays out the steps for them to follow. They can see from the beginning, start, all the way to the end, what happens. And so I would advise you using, of course, the task, the prompt, you come up with the process, descriptive approach from the beginning all the way to the end. And you, if you could see, it, it literally, you know, it includes all of the prompts that we've been tasked with doing. That's the steps a user will take to sign up for an account on the FinManage platform. So this descriptive approach shows exactly that. The user would has you know has to start the process. They go into the various uh, places. So you can go on your App Store or your Google Play Store, you know, and download the app. And then they have to go through a registration process. Then they have to provide a, which involves providing the personal information, such as full name, email address, and of course creating a password. And then there is a verification that we were told. See, it's here. We're told about verification 
uh, and and then of course additional details such as date of birth you know this this is useful and occupation for account verification purposes and then we want to set up the security measures as well and also given the chance to enable the two-factor authentication for added account security again it was mentioned here two-factor security measures two-factor authentication for enhanced account protection and then of course once that's done you have to accept terms and conditions and then you confirm the account creation and then there is initial uh, setup you just guide it through the app if this is your first time you're you're downloading the app and creating an account which is always the case so this which is optional and then you're taken to the dashboard where you can then proceed to you know do a whole lot of other things such as managing your finances tracking expenses and so on and that's the end and that sharing this with stakeholders senior stakeholders it's much easier for them to conceptualize and really understand what the system is trying to achieve via that registration process because that's the goal and you can get feedback in terms of what to optimize what to remove that's part of the benefits of creating such a thing and sharing it with the business and now you think this is great but for engineering teams they may want a visual a visual diagram that's much easier for them to then start thinking about the technical architecture and so on and then they can link it to their journey the technical journey so whilst this is great this might not be the best way of communicating with engineering teams and that's why we will be creating a diagramic process flow communicate with our engineering teams okay so let's just increase here okay so let's begin so as we always said this is start so this is Miro if you're using Miro you can use the various platforms that are out there whichever one you feel comfortable with you could also draw this on paper and share it with people there is nothing that says you have to do it using technology okay so this is our start Okay, I think maybe before we begin, let me explain a few concepts. So, these are the symbols that we'll be using. This is use start or end. So wherever we see a circle, it just means it's the beginning or it's the end. And then wherever we see a diamond, diamond means it's a decision point. And this is the language that we use to communicate and this is a process it's a step essentially a step a task so wherever we see a circle it means start or end wherever we see a diamond it means it's a decision point 
And wherever we see a square, it means it's a process. So we saw a circle as a start, and then we see immediately we see a process, a square. So, and that process is, as we can see, step number two, it's app download. User downloads, bin manage app. So we summarize that here. I don't want to, I don't have enough space to put the entire text. So you just synthesize it to what makes sense. And the next step, registration. So use a For this, let's say user launches. So once you download the app, the next logical thing to do is to launch the app. So user launches the app. Once the user launches the app, the next thing to do is uh, present it with a home page. In which case, User lands on the app home screen, and then here, the user clicks on sign up, and then we come back now. So sign up, and then So there's an opportunity we just missed. So just undo that. So actually what should happen is we should have a decision point. We pose the question, does the user have an account? Does the user have an account? If the answer is yes, we go forward. We process, if the answer is no, we go down. So, yes. So proof of text. So you can see here it's an inflection point. You're at a crossroad. You are at the home page and you have two choices to make. Sign in or create an account. But you can only sign in if you already have an account. However, if you don't have an account, you can sign up and create an account. So 
how do we reflect that we say we bring in a diamond say does the user have an account if it's yes they have an account then they just have to sign in if no then they have to create an account Okay, and we come back. This is good for guiding us. And the next thing now, personal information. User enters a full name, email address, and so on. Let's capture this. User completes personal information, and this you can give an example, e.g., name, email, phone number, and that's that. And then we can split this as a journey. We can say the first thing they do is give us the personal information, the next thing is set a password for the account user sets a password let's just keep it at that come back here to look at the next step so personal information creates a secure password okay fantastic the next step is verification so we reflect that as part of the process we call that account verification Again, here we need another decision point because once that verification is sent to your phone or to your email, we need to check that you've successfully received that code and verify it. So, is verification successful? If yes, then you can move on to the next step. If no, then you have to do it again. So this is how we reflect that in the diagram. So once you're in account verification, verification can be done via email or phone number and once you get that verification and you put that code or you click on your email it takes you straight through to the app and successfully verifies then that's successful put in the wrong code it will be unsuccessful so you stay in that loop until verification is successful then you can get out of the loop Okay, and we come back here, said user enters the verification code. So we've captured that with that. And then next step is number six, additional details user provides such as date of birth, address. Yeah, we can also take this as well. And that could happen below. Hold on. Maybe 
additional details. We can paste that. Or actually, we can leave it at that and then just add a note. Sticky notes are great for this, so and everyone can read them. Move on to the next one. Security setup user sets up. So again, you can do the same thing. So with a sticky note that contains the text next to it, this is great for providing more context. So anyone reading this, essentially scroll in, zoom in, and then reads it, and they're clear what this is for. And then if you don't a two-factor, as we saw here, we don't want a two-factor setup, then we need to confirm. We need to double check. So whenever we need to double check something, we bring in a decision point. That's crucial. It's great for verifying that. For double checking. So we transform this to a diamond. We pose the question. Is additional security added access successfully Or no, it isn't, then we try. We try. And of course, there will be a chance to skip the try. Within the app itself, what usually happens is users have the choice to skip if they no if they no longer want to add it. Need to do the same here and say verification is unsuccessful here. There's no skipping. We must verify. No, we try. Um, apologies, this should come from here. This is the yes. We observe in our flow. Yes, it's always going. Uh, yes, it's taking us down, as you can see here. Yes, verification is successful. Additional details, if there are any, you provide them. If there are none, you just proceed. Would you like to set up 
security, yes. Go ahead, that could be two-factor authentication. Or it just it could be a security question. That's question like, for, for instance, where are you from? Where were you born? And then if you ever have to reset your account, you'll be asked that question and then you provide it and then you'll be given the go ahead to change the password in your account. Okay, so additional security done. We come back here. Next, proceed to terms and conditions. Terms and conditions for PIN app. Fantastic. Right here. Seas and seeds. Terms and conditions. So here you just have to accept. So user reviews terms and conditions. Again, there's going to be diamond because user has a choice to say, no, actually, I don't like the terms. In which case, you can just exit the app. Does user accept terms and conditions? Whenever you download an app, you always have to accept the terms and conditions. Otherwise, you won't be allowed to progress. So anyone that doesn't accept the terms and condition, they simply have to go back. So at that point, they can exit the app. If they accept the terms and conditions, then they can progress forward to the next steps. the next step we come back here confirmation account creation is confirmed and the user receives a confirmation message indicating successful registration okay so here it seems account creation confirmation that's what this step is say well done you're done And then next, let's say initial setup, which is a guided setup that's just for user experience. But in terms of account registration, this is where it ends. But we can add that as well. Let's say initial, initial account guided setup. Then the next step is to access your dashboard. Ta-da, you've done it. Well done for creating an account. Here's your dashboard. That's your pin managed dashboard. And then the next thing you see, nothing else. From there, you can do everything that you want to do so that will be the end that's the end in terms of this journey so let's go over it again so we're clear as we discussed we use circle to mean start or end we use decision point to be the diamond we use a square to be a process a step or a task so, you've been given this create an account process flow with financial management app Pin Manage. And in order, so these are the steps a user takes in order to create an account. So, this is the descriptive process, descriptive journey. And then, here is that journey transformed into a logical process flow we can share with anyone that wants to read it or go through it.
So usually engineering teams, this is what they prefer. So you can use this to communicate with anyone. Also in life, you could also use this, you know, to make your decisions. So it's quite a useful framework for communicating complex ideas. Okay, so let's review that. You start, you download InManage, the app from either the App Store or on Google Play Store. You launch the app, you land on the home page. Do you have an account? If yes, you just sign in. Once you sign in, you go to the dashboard. That's it. So we can actually draw a line that takes us all the way to the app dashboard. Yeah, that's the journey. So for someone that already has an account, it's really straightforward. Once you, you sign in, you have an account, yes, sign in. You're taken straight to the dashboard and then you can do whatever you need to do. However, if you don't have an account, then as that, that's the whole purpose of this process flow. These are the steps that you need to take. So you click on sign up. You complete your personal details, name, email, phone number, etc. And then you set a password. And then now we need to verify that you've given us the right email or phone number. So if it's successful, if that's all successful, we can move on. If it isn't, keep trying until you, until we can confirm your number or your email. So verification successful. This means we have successfully confirmed your email or your phone number. Whichever you provide it, that's what we use to confirm. Additional details here if you want to add your DOB, your address, occupation, and so on. And then security setup here, we want to a way to protect your account from unintended uh, accessing by anyone. And then you can also use two-factor authentication. So each time you log in, we send you a code to either your email or to your phone number just to confirm that it's you accessing. Could be some sensitive details on FinManage that we don't want anyone else to gain access to. Is additional security added successfully? If yes, you proceed. Again, you can skip this. This isn't mandatory. And then user reviews terms and conditions. Does the user accept? terms and conditions, uh, yes, proceed forward, no, you have to leave the app, you have to exit, you cannot accept, you cannot move forward without accepting the terms and condition. So if you choose not to accept, then you have to exit the app, you have to close the app, there's nothing you could do otherwise. So you accept and that begins the account creation process and that's the end. Account creation is done uh, and here is just initial guided setup. So I hope you set up the app ready for you to use once you arrive on the dashboard. So you're now in the dashboard and you're set. That's the end. I hope this helps and you can follow the steps, watch the video, rewatch and watch until you understand the concepts that we've used here. So essentially we've literally used you know circle, diamond and a square to help us map the descriptive process flow. We could easily have done that without having done this. Having done the descriptive version first, we could literally go from the task itself and move on straight to the diagramic approach. Just as it's nice to have, you know, the two. So you have options. People have options. Whichever version they prefer to read, you send them that version. So 
I hope this helps. I, I would want for you all to try this, please, using the two exercises that have been given. Use that, and if you have any questions, just send, drop a message on Slack, and I'll be able to support you in whichever way possible. Okay, have a great evening. See you all on Sunday. Oh, and, and also, lastly, uh, I hope you all began your presentation for Sunday. So, looking forward to seeing what everyone has done. Have a great evening. Bye-bye.